Hi everyone, I'm Laurent Su and in this video I'm going to talk about all Sonic games for the Nintendo GameCube. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is the first game where Sonic doesn't appear only on a Sega console. It's the debut of the multi-platform history of Sonic. You get to choose two different storylines, Hero and Dark. If you choose the Hero Quest, you'll play as Sonic, Knuckles and Tails, while trying to stop Dr. Atman from taking over the world. In the Dark Quest, you'll play as Batgirl named Rouge, Dr. Eggman and Shadow. And each character has a special attribute. Sonic and Shadow are, the speed, are in the speed levels, Eggman and Tails are in the piloting and shooting levels, and Knuckles and Rouge are in the scavenger hunts after Emerald levels. And while the speed levels are great, the other two gameplay types are... Eh, they work out. And the camera is terrible in the scavenger hunts. Okay, in general it is terrible. The, ca the camera in this game is terrible. Oh, and it's nice that the game also has some local multiplayer option. So you can play with a friend. Sonic Mega Collection is a compilation of games. I'm just going to list the game as it will take me hours to talk about each game in particular and review it. So let me just tell you which games Mega Collection includes. So it includes Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic Spinball, Dr. Robotnik Spin Bean Machine, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3D Blast, Blue Sphere, Knuckles in Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and you also get additional unlockable games. Flicky, Ristar, Comic Zone, and The Ooze. Sonic Adventures DX Director's Cut Edition is a port of the 1999 Dreamcast game Sonic Adventure. You get 6 playable characters, you get lots of levels, 30 levels, and the Director's Cut Edition adds 60 more missions. You also get GBA Link Cable functionality, and it has minor graphical improvements. You get lots of stuff to do, it feels like a Super Mario 64 Sonic themed game. It's fast paced, action packed, and it's awesome. Sonic Heroes is an import from Japan. If you would ever choose between the GameCube version or the PS2 one, always choose the GameCube version. It has solid frame rate. Unlike the PS2 one that has inconsistent frames, which ruined the experience many times. But if you're playing it on GameCube, you're in luck. You have one problem less. In this game, you go in teams. You don't play alone. You get four teams. Team Sonic, Team Dark, Team Rose, and Team Chaotix. Each team behaves the same, meaning that each team is comprised of three characters, one for speed, one for flying, and one for smashing. And you need to change characters often to get through the levels, either to run faster with Sonic, or to smash something with Knuckles, or to take Tails and fly all three characters over something into, into something. The level designs are pretty straightforward and boss battles are a little bit challenging, which is nice. I mean, it has that sort of balance between challenging and easy. It's an okay game, not incredible, not bad, but it's still good. Oh, and a nice little detail I liked about the game was that each team had their own motivations to start the levels. So, even if you play in the same levels with each team in particular, they have different motivations and have different cutscenes. So basically you can say that you get four stories, one per each team, even if all the stories happen in the same levels. Sonic Gems Collection is another compilation of games. In this one you get Sonic CD, Sonic the Fighters, Sonic R, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble, Sonic Spinball, Sonic Drift 2, Tails Sky Patrol, Tails Adventure, and you also get some unlockable games, Vector Man, Vector Man 2, Bonanza Bros, Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage 2, and Streets of Rage 3. Sonic Riders might seem like a bad idea, I mean Sonic can run fast, why would he need a board? Well, the game isn't that bad, 
I mean, the story is bad because it's nonsense. And the ending, well, if you have good dark humor, you can counsel yourself that you've managed to unfold an ending that stupid. But if you expect the story to blow your pants, well, just don't expect it, play another game. The racing though, it's solid. You get 16 characters to choose from, and it's nice that they are split into 3 categories. You get characters of speed, that can grind on rails, flying characters, that can go through this gate, and power characters, that smash stuff. And this gives some nice variety during races. You also get a lot of boards, and other means of going fast, like skates and uh, bikes, each with different stats. You also need air for any means of transport, when you go out of air you run on foot, until the air regenerates. Air is the boost in this game, and bikes use the most air, but are faster, so there is some strategy and depth to the racing. It's a good game. Shadow the Hedgehog sounds like those type of games that were conceived in a stupid way, like for example, the boss asks the people in, in a meeting, OK people, what should we put in the game to make it the ultimate experience? And those people in the meeting just threw in ideas without, without thinking that it doesn't really fit the character, Shadow. They, so they threw ideas like, oh, we should put aliens. And any badass character should have guns and explode stuff and the boss must have been like that's it print it that's how shadow the hedgehog feels i mean i know the character is badass but why would you put guns in the hands of a cartoon hedgehog and then put him to shoot aliens robots and even humans and they added one of the most cliche plots shadow loses his memory he has amnesia and wants to find out about his past. Sounds familiar? You get 22 levels and you can choose if you want to be a good guy or a bad guy. If you want to be the bad guy you shoot all the humans. If you want to be the good guy then you need to shoot all the aliens. But shooting mechanics are so annoying that if you're like me you won't shoot anyone and you will just go straight to the emerald at the end of the levels and avoid any enemy. In terms of variety, the different levels look distinct, you get multiple types of weapons like pistols, bazookas, laser rifles, you get different moves, you get to drive different vehicles in some levels, but the overall mechanics feel wonky. Even if the game sounds good on paper, it isn't that impressive when you get to play it. Ok, so this was the video, if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe, if you want to be a very special member of the channel, just click the join button and choose one of the perks, if you want follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord, and if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching!